oh my gosh, artificial intelligence is taking over the world. Okay, maybe it's not taking over the world, but it definitely is taking over the marketing world in the mortgage industry uh, by storm. Um, but what is artificial intelligence? And uh, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about Chat GPT um, and a little experiment that I've uh, that I'm that I'm playing with, and I'm going to let you guys see over my shoulder and. Um, and we're going to see what this thing has to uh, has to offer. Uh, let me make my slide. So this is um, a little bit uh, dense. So if you're listening to the podcast, um, I will read through some of this, but I'm also um, pasting the answers. So what I'm going to go through is a series of me asking questions of chat GPT, uh, getting answers, elaborating on those answers, and really coming up with a whole slew of really, really interesting uh, results. So if you're watching the video, I have slides and I'm kind of showing you what my question is, um, how the question is coming back, uh, but it's also pretty text dense. Um, but I'm mostly just showing you as an example. We're not going to go through and read all of this. So really what we're talking about when we're talking about artificial intelligence, people like to use the word AI. Um, it's not really intelligence. It's a really smart algorithm um, that is accessing existing data and compiling it. Um, really what it is, is it's sort of an interactive search engine. Uh, but what we're going to use it for, and there's a lot of these tools out there, not just ChatGPT. ChatGPT just happens to be the most interactive and the most interesting right now. Um, because of the way that it's designed. But ultimately we're talking about um, using AI uh, powered copywriting tools. Um, and so that's primarily what we're gonna use this for is for copywriting. So what is ChatGPT exactly? Now I'm, um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be lazy here, but I'm gonna just tell you exactly what it is. So I've got a bunch of screenshots from the Chat GPT website so that you understand what this tool is. And so this is how they describe it themselves: is Chat GPT is optimizing language models for dialogue. Uh, basically, they've trained um, this model, which interacts with you in a conversational way. And so the dialogue um, really makes it possible. And this is where this is where it gets really cool is that you can have a conversation with it. It'll remember what you asked it before so that you can build on and you can unpack uh, questions or answers or things that you've submitted to it before. Um, now, supposedly it admits its mistakes. Uh, it'll challenge incorrect premises. And it'll uh, reject inappropriate requests. I haven't really pushed it that way. I haven't tried to trip it up. I'm just trying to use it as a tool to help me um, create content uh, in my mortgage business. So uh, yes, you can get crazy with it and you can have some fun with it. Um, the other day I did ask it um, if there's a God <laughs> and if it believes in aliens and things like that. Uh, just wondering what it would come back with. It was much more interesting than what I'm going to share today. Actually, it wasn't interesting at all. It just said, I don't know. I'm a language learning model and I just repeat what I'm told. So uh, so that's what ChatGPT is. It's a, it's a interactive engine that understands language and you can communicate with it and you can have a dialogue with it. Um, so it's basically really what this is, is it's an experimental playground. Um, that's what Chad GPT is. So let's go through what it is and what the rules are and kind of what the criteria is. And this is right from their website. So some examples of, of that they give you is that you can ask um, to explain things. They The example is explain quantum computing uh, in simple terms. And the other one is, do you have any creative ideas for a 10 year old's birthday party? So those are kind of cool. And then the other one is, um, is asking for code. So ultimately where AI is trying to go is write me code to do this. And so you don't need to be a coder. Um, there's some really cool things that they're trying to do with this, but, um, 
you know, the challenge with asking it, so explain quantum computing in simple terms. My challenge with that is if you ask it something that you don't have any background or information on or knowledge about, you're not going to know where the mistakes are because I tr trust me, this is not perfect. And there are a lot of mistakes in it. Uh, there have been a lot of mistakes publicly. Uh, and quite frankly, it's not that it's making mistakes. It's just that it's a very limited, um, it's a limited search engine right now and it has a limited amount of data. Uh, capabilities. Uh, this is where it gets really cool. This is probably one of my favorite parts about it is it remembers what you said in the previous conversation. And so it allows you to follow up, um, follow up on things. And I'm going to actually do that. Um, I'm going to do that during this example, uh, the experiment that I'm going to show you today. Uh, I ask it questions. I ask it for lists, and then I ask it to elaborate specifically on one of the items in the list. It's pretty cool. Uh, the limitations. So the limitations, it's important to understand this. Again, this is not a perfect solution. It's not a perfect tool. If you think you're going to go in there and this is just going to do all of your work for you, um, you're going to put some really crappy content out there and it's not going to perform the way that you want it to. Uh, but if you're really smart about this and you kind of understand its capabilities, uh, this is one of the things I'm really excited about it. Um, mostly in the, in the context of, of just to get your creative juices flowing and it forces you to think about asking better questions because the better question you ask with chat GPT, the better answers you're going to get. Okay. So here's my first time home buyer experiment. This is what I did. Uh, the first thing I did is I asked it for three optimized titles for a YouTube video. Then I asked it to elaborate and create copy from one of the headlines that I liked, turn that copy into a video script outline, give me some thumbnail ideas, give me copy for the thumbnails and images for the thumbnails, which is interesting. Uh, give me a description idea for this video. And then can you turn that description into a blog post? Now, this is actually two separate searches, and I'll show you where the separation was. I tried to do this on one long um, conversation, and I don't know if I timed it out or if I just kind of got into a rabbit hole, but it stopped working after a while, and I had to start a new search, um, and I'll show you exactly where that is. Um, but let's dive into it. Let's see, let's see what it came back with. So YouTube title ideas. So my first question, um, I approach this as though, um, as though I were going to, uh, I, I want to create a YouTube video for first time home buyers. So this was my question. Can you give me three SEO optimized title ideas for a YouTube video that educates first time home buyers about getting their finances in order to prepare for buying a home? So that is pretty precise. And I really experimented with this a lot. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can ask these questions, but again, the more precise. Um, so this is the one that I, that I settled on because um, I thought it was relatively precise and I wanted to see what it would come back with. So um, not too shabby. It came back with three answers, five steps to financially prepare your first home purchase, uh, first time buyers, how to get your finances in order, and the ultimate guide to preparing your finances for buying your first home. Well, um, okay, that's not right. <laughs> like, like you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, uh, you're not going to launch a parade from those results. It's not, uh, it's not mind blowing by any means, but they're interesting. Uh, I decided I'm going to kind of follow this path to the five steps uh, to financially prepare for your first home purchase. Uh, mostly because I know when I have steps, it's easier to create videos. And if I create a long form video with five steps, it gives me the ability to peel out each one of those individual steps and create uh, shorter videos for each one of those steps. So um, I like number one, 
What's next? So number one was interesting. Um, so next, my next question that I typed in is, can you elaborate on the five steps you mentioned in title option one? So remember, title option one was the five steps to financially prepare. My next question in the same conversation thread is, can you elaborate on those five steps that you mentioned in the first option you gave me? Now, this is really cool because it'll always repeat your question back to you. So it says, certainly, here are five steps that first-time homebuyers can take to financially prepare for buying a home. Um, listen, we could all sit down and come up with these five steps. And as I read these, uh, it comes up with assess your credit score and history, evaluate your debt to income ratio, create a budget, save for a down payment and get pre-approved for a mortgage. That's not bad. Um, it just isn't. It's not bad. I mean, it doesn't stand out. Uh, when you read through there, it's pretty generic. So I like the ideas, um, but I would probably rewrite these. I Not probably, I would for sure rewrite these to make it my own. But I'll tell you what, I probably only need about 25 or 30% of this copy tweaked so that it sounds more personalized and it sounds like it's more in my um, in my voice. So, okay, so I like that. So I like the five points that they gave me. I'm just going to accept it. Um, again, I'm not actually taking this copy and doing anything with it yet. Um, I'm still just unpacking the copy and trying to figure out because when you get done, you're going to have, um, you're going to have all of your questions and all of the answers on a single page. Uh, it doesn't look like you can download it or export it, uh, but you can certainly copy it and paste it and then review it later and pull that copy off and, and work with it. So, my next question is, let's create a video script off of this. So my question was only, can you turn this list into a script outline, please? And it says, sure, here's an outline for a script that covers the five steps first-time homebuyers can take to financially prepare for a home. And, and then it starts to list it out. Because I asked for a script, it breaks it down into the different sections for me. Introduction, introduce the topic of the video, financial preparation for first-time buyers, um, Explain why it's important to get your finances in order. So this is an outline. This isn't a script. This is an outline for a script. It's not actually what it wants me to say. So let's see here. It says, uh, step one, assess your credit. Explain what a credit score is, why it matters for getting a mortgage. Again, this is an outline. Evaluate your debt to income ratio. Explain why it's important. Create a budget. Explain why creating a budget is important. Um, save for a down payment, get pre-approved for a mortgage, and then conclusion, recap the five steps first-time buyers can make and then encourage your buyers to take action and prepare, uh, start preparing their finances uh, for home ownership. So this is pretty amazing. And, and I'll be honest, the the when I went into this, um, so this interview is actually going to uh, publish next week, uh, but I did a I did an interview with Brian View from Finlocker. And Finlocker is really an early entry, first time home buyer um, uh, mortgage readiness tool. And that was my thought on this is, is if I could create content or create a video to explain to first time home buyers how important it is to prepare and to get ready. Um, and then I could provide a tool like a FinLocker to get them to sign up. And now I'm engaging with them and I have a long-term nurture uh, strategy that is really set it and forget it. If I can, if I can express to them uh, the importance of mortgage preparedness, financial readiness, then I can provide them with the tools uh, for that financial readiness. And now I have my my system. And I, I don't know how much I talk about this in the podcast, um, but I know I touch on it. 
you know, a big part of creating content is you really have to think out everything that happens with that content. What's the call to action? Where does that information go? If they're, how do you, how do you get their questions answered now? And if they're not ready to move right now, if they're not ready to buy or refinance or whatever, uh, what is your long-term nurture strategy look like so that you can stay top of mind and stay in front of them uh, until they're ready to buy? So that was my thought process going, going into this. I suppose I could have said that earlier. Um, but so there's my video outline. Um, now, this is where I screwed it up. So I kind of rabbit holed a little bit, and it just gave me an error, and it said that it timed out and, and it couldn't do anymore. So I went and I did another search. And because I had another search, I kind of had to tell Chat GPT what I wanted the thumbnail about. Uh, and what I was really trying to do is I was trying to go back to all the conversation we had previously and say, okay, create me some thumbnail copy. And, uh, and it, uh, but it was just, it was too long. So I started a new one and here's what I typed into the search. I have a YouTube video titled five steps to financially prepare for your first home purchase. Can you give me five thumb stopping ideas for the thumbnail? Now, I wasn't sure if it would understand what thumb stopping is, but when we talk about uh, when we talk about marketing, uh, video marketing, especially on mobile, you're flipping through your phone, right? And you're looking at videos, and a thumb stopping thumbnail is one that you see the thumbnail and you stop, and you want to look at that video and you want to read more. So I threw that um, again, natural language. I just spoke in a natural language, and um, and said, <laughs> let's say, give me some thumb stopping thumbnails. Let's see what it came back with. Uh, so I actually, so let's go back. Um, I have a YouTube video titled this. Can you give me five thumb stopping copy ideas for the thumbnail? That was my question. This actually really surprised me because it also gave me a description of what the graphic should look like on the thumbnail. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So here's the copy that it gave me. Um, unlock your dream, five simple steps to get you there. I like that. And then afterwards it says, with an image of a key or a dream home in the background. Um, number two, stop renting, start owning, the ultimate guide to buying your first home. Uh, and then it says with an image of a of someone holding a key um, or a sold sign in front of the house. So so as you can see, this is kind of cool. Uh, if you're watching the video, I, I guess I'll read the rest of these because they're not horrible. Um, take control. Of, number three, take control of your finances. Five foolproof tips to buy your first home with an image of a calculator or a budget spreadsheet. Um, number four, don't let your first home purchase be a nightmare. Follow these five steps uh, with an image of a haunted house or scary looking home. That one's kind of cool. Uh, number five, from renting to own, learn how to buy your first home with these five steps. Uh, with an image of somebody crossing out renting and writing owning in a notebook. Um, that's really, really interesting. That is a, there's a lot of diversity in those and there's a lot of creativity. So I like these, but I wanted to mess with it a little bit. And um, listen, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chad GPT, the whole image of a key, um, that's a little cliche. So you're close, but not quite. And so I try to play around with it. Um, I don't like the keys. So, uh, so this is what I typed. I don't like images of keys in the background. Can you give me a different suggestion? Sure. Here are five more thumb stopping copy ideas for your YouTube video thumbnail without using without using images of keys. <laughs> so 
Uh, it goes back through and it says, you know, ready to buy your first home? Here's five essential steps with an image of a person standing in front of a for sale sign, uh, with an image of a happy family standing in front of their new home, with an image of a calculator or a pile of money, with an image of someone holding a home sign um, or a house silhouette. So now I said, <laughs> okay, I like your headlines, but I don't like your graphics. Give me different graphics. So that's kind of cool, right? That's a little bit interesting. Um, okay, cool. So now I have I have a video title, um, which I picked out of three different options. I um, I have a description. I have elaborated five points um, that all first time home buyers need to know to get financially prepared. Uh, I have a um, I have the thumbnail designed, right? So I have a thumbnail. Now I need a description for my video. So how do I describe this video? Uh, what do I have here? Oh, okay. So this is what I did. So based on this, I asked it for, for five more, for five more ideas without the keys. So I liked number four, the ultimate guide to buying your first home, follow these five steps. So I liked that. So my next question was, I like four, option number four. Can you give me three ideas for a description of this video written at a ninth grade reading level? Okay, so that's important. When I ask it to start creating copy that people are going to read. So first I asked for an outline, um, then I asked for title ideas. Um, these are kind of internal, at least the outlines and the script uh, outlines um, are kind of internal. But when I'm asking for stuff that consumer is going to read, I want to make sure that it's easy to understand. So a really cool function of ChatGPT is you can tell it which reading level that you want. So here's what it did. So here's three possible descriptions for your video written at a ninth grade reading level. Um, and these are pretty generic, um, but they're not bad. So the first one, are you dreaming of buying your first home? Make that dream a reality by following these five expert tips. In this video, we'll show you how to take control of your finances and prepare for the biggest purchase of your life. That's pretty good. Ready to stop renting and start owning. It's time to prepare for your first home purchase. In this video, we'll share five essential steps to help you get started from saving for a down payment to finding the right mortgage. We've got you covered. So as you can see, like this stuff is pretty good. It's not horrible. Um, again, I would probably rewrite maybe 15, 20 25% of this, um, I would tweak it a little bit. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I don't like shortcuts. I like shortcuts. I like making things easier, but I don't like cheating and copying and pasting feels like cheating to me. Um, it's lazy. It's not, it's, it's not just a shortcut. It's just lazy because, this thing just did 90% of the work for me. I can literally take this and go through and what would normally take me two hours to plan out this video and put this whole thing together, I could probably do it in less than an hour using this tool. So this is super, super powerful stuff and it's really, really good, but don't copy and paste. Use it as a starting ground, as a foundation for you to kind of rewrite it, tweak it, make it a little bit your own. Um, make it your, just make it your own. Okay. So now I decided to push it. So this is, I'm just getting a little bit crazy and the, I wouldn't normally do this in this order. Um, next week, I'm going to do my next chat GPT experiment and I'm going to talk about repurposing content. So if the video is already done, um, and we have a transcript of the video, how to take that transcript and repurpose it for blog posts and things like that. But I didn't have that on this one. So I was just curious and I said, um, can you build off a of number three and write a 700 word blog post? So number three was, um, there was three options when I asked uh, for a description for the video. Number three was buying your first home can feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. With the right preparation, you can, you can make a start 
you can make a start and a smart and confident purchase. That one wasn't Chat GPT. That was Scott's reading abilities. <laughs> so with the right preparation, you can you can make a smart and confident purchase. In this video, we'll guide you through five financial steps you need uh, before buying your first home. Get ready to unlock the door to your dream home. So that was number three. And I said, cool, could you build off of number three and write a 700 word blog post? Sure, here's a 700 word blog post that builds off the third description. Um, and then it proceeds to go. So now what was interesting on this particular one is the five so remember this search was only talking about thumbnails my previous search had the outline for the video so when i said to do this this 700 word blog post the only points that it had to go off of is what i had recent that what i had previously written in this particular chat session so it doesn't know the five steps that I was originally get given. It didn't give me the five um, fi steps for financial preparedness because it didn't know what they were. Um, that's not chat GPT's fault. That's the fact that I had to uh, create another, I, I had to create another search. So the five steps, uh, the five essential financial steps that it gave me were not the exact five financial steps that I had in the other search. They were five different steps. Um, and quite frankly, uh, if you get the five steps, if you say, give me the five financial steps and you don't like them, um, I did another experiment. It's not on this, uh, it's not on this episode, uh, but I basically said, I like step number two, uh, give me alternatives for all the other, for the other four. And then it gave me words for the other four. So my takeaways, um, so be precise and push the boundaries of the details. When you're playing with this thing, the, the quality and the creativity of your questions will produce a higher quality and more creative results. Um, test different approaches um, and level of detail. Uh, like the one that I said, uh, who is my borrower? Um, here's another thing that I really like about this is by figuring, by forcing you to figure out which questions to ask, um, that's also forcing you to create an avatar, to create who is this customer, what are their likes, what are their dislikes, uh, how should I talk to them, um, what kind of words should I use. It's when you really think about who your client is and what your what your conversation is, this is going to train you for all the content that you do um, and all of the marketing communication that you do. This will help teach you um, to ask better questions. And when you ask better questions, you're going to get better answers. Um, build off of your previous answers. Um, Ask for clarification and alternatives. Get creative with really unpacking the answers um, that it comes back with and force it to elaborate and offer deviations uh, to see even more great ideas. Again, you're not trying to produce something that you can copy and paste and publish. Uh, you're trying to get your creative juices flowing. And this tool is going to help you find 90% of the direction, maybe 95% of the direction, the structure and the words that you can use. And then the rest of it, um, you're just going to build off of it. But what I found me personally is it really started making me think about how do I communicate this better? Is there a way for me to say this um, so that it's easier to understand? And that's where I I, I really got, uh, that's really where I thought this was interesting and, and where I got excited about this. Um, Ask for copy written at a specific reading level. That's a that's probably a pretty important one. Anytime you're creating content that consumers are going to read, identify what the reading level is. And this certainly isn't a political statement. Um, 
at all. Uh, but it was pretty commonly known that President Trump, um, most of his speeches would uh, would really be rated at about a fourth grade reading level. It was very simple. Uh, he used easy, small words, and he repeated the words a lot. Um, so that's kind of, but his speeches also were really popular and people showed up all the time. So uh, it's it's a good idea especially for mortgage people, when you start getting into finances and you start getting into nuances, and especially if you were trained by a salesperson, um, salespeople like to sound fancy um, because they think it makes them sound smart. So we use acronyms and um, dialogue about, you know, about mortgages and guidelines and all of this stuff that uh, try to make us look smart. Forget about all of that. Communicate succinctly uh, and, and, and in, very, in a way that's very easy to understand. So one of the cool things you say, um, read this at a ninth grade reading level. Well, there are standard rating scales on the internet uh, that uh, the search engine, ChatGPT, uh, is going to run it through those uh, Fleischmann rating scores uh, or, or reading level ratings, uh, or I don't know, maybe there's another one out there. And uh, they're going to make sure that all of your dialogue is at a reading level that's easy to easy for people to understand. And that's really cool. And that's important because I know I'm guilty um, sometimes of getting too technical. And uh, and sometimes it gets too complex and we start using too much inside baseball and uh, industry jargon and it confuses consumers. So this this is something that I'm actually really excited about uh, because it keeps it helps me to keep things simple. Uh, my other takeaway, chat GPT is not going to do all of the work, but you'll have a ton, but it will save you a ton of time and it'll really push your creativity. Um, and as marketers, we're always looking for that expression, um, that's different from what we would come up with on our, uh, on our, by ourselves. And, um, that's what I really appreciated about chat GPT is it's got so much data that it's able to give me options and wording and ideas that I didn't always think about those ideas. So I really, really like it for give me three ideas for this kind of title. Give me three options for this. Um, give me a list of the top five things you would do uh, in this situation. Um, okay, I like those two, give me three more. Like these kinds of things, really asking those questions and diving deep. The way that I look at this or the way that I thought about this is I thought whatever my subject matter is, I pretended like that person was across the desk from me and I was trying to have a conversation with it. It's not exactly like that, but I found myself asking it questions Um saying please, saying thank you, and kind of treating it like, hey, could you please give me this? Okay, that's interesting. Can you elaborate on that? Can you unpack that for me? Um, explain this to me like I'm a fifth grader, right? And it, it, ChatGPT will do that. It will take that text, it'll reformat it, and it'll explain to you like it's a fifth grader. Um, again, super, super cool. And then finally, my biggest takeaway is just have fun with it. Um, it is interesting and it is pretty exciting. And for me, it really got my creative juices flowing. Um, I'm going to do a few more videos on this. Uh, I'm going to experiment with a few more things and I'm going to try to come away with a tool set um, for video content creators. More importantly than video, video is where it starts. Video is my foundation. From that video, I'm going to transcribe it. I'm going to get copy and I'm going to repurpose that copy so that I can amplify my message on multiple mediums, multiple platforms. So uh, I encourage that you play with it and that you have fun with it and that you test it. Um, it's a really, really powerful tool, and I know it's going to save me time, and I know it's going to help me come up with creative ideas that um, maybe sometimes we get too close to the trees and we can't see the forest. And that's one of the things that I really like about this. So to wrap this up, um, 
if uh, if you folks are thinking about buying leads and going consumer direct, um, I'm talking about creating content so that you can generate your own uh, organic inbound consumer direct traffic. And I wrote a small blueprint about this or a white paper about this. Hey, it's not that small. I think it's maybe 13, 17 pages maybe. Um, but I have this free blueprint for you uh, to download. Uh, it's at MLO, Mortgage Loan Officer dot expert mlo.expert. I'm going to talk about what consumer direct is, where the biggest audience of prospects, mortgage prospects are today, um, how to get in front of them, how to capture them, how to convert them. And if they're not ready to convert, how to long-term nurture them. Uh, if you are not the uh, do-it-yourself type and you're looking for a done-for-you solution, um, you can also... Uh, this is what I do at the Find My Way Home Expert Network. Uh, FindMyWayHome.com is a consumer-facing website that educates and empowers consumers and, quite frankly, keeps them out of call centers. Uh, we get about twenty to 25,000 unique visitors a month, and those consumers I will introduce to you today um, so that you will have uh, a guaranteed number of conversations every single month with consumers that are looking uh, that have questions about qualifying for a mortgage while we're helping you build up your video library, your content library, and we're teaching you how to leverage that um, to build up your YouTube channel, build up your blog, um, and build up your organic inbound business. So if you are interested in getting more information on that, it's at findmywayhome.com forward slash LO expert. And there are links for that uh, in the comments below. If you found this interesting, please, please, please um, subscribe, like, comment, uh, any questions that you have. Um, I am, uh, I will answer every single question that you have. And I would love to get a dialogue going uh, around this. Um, around this conversation, uh, around chat GPT, see what your ideas are, see what your best practices are. And if you're doing some really, really cool stuff, maybe you can hop on one of these episodes with me and we can unpack it for everybody. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful and we will see you on the next episode of the Second Opinion Loan Officer Podcast. Bye.